coming. I'm Josh Meyer, superintendent of schools here. Um, Chad Fisher, Tom Garner, board members. And uh, I wanted to make sure we got the facts out about, about this election that is coming up. Actually, advanced voting is going on now, so you can vote today uh, if you'd like, or you could have voted today uh, during the business hours at the county clerk's office. The formal election uh, is on June 17th. And you see the question there, it's on the same paper that you have there, is to increase uh, our local option budget by 1%. Now, with the new changes in school finance, uh, actually that 1% means 3%. Uh, if we increase it to uh, an extra 1% by board action, they can go another 2% on top of that. So really that's what we're talking about. Why wouldn't we just say 3% on this question? Because this is what state law is. This is what state law allows and some of those things are changing. So it's, it's somewhat confusing. Uh, why are we looking at doing this? Um, down toward the bottom, there's, there's several points uh, I want to make sure you understand is that with the new school finance law, um, you may have heard how much more money that the state is putting into schools, uh, but we will see none of that. We see zero extra funding from the state. Uh, some other districts will, uh, but we will not. We'll actually see a reduction of about $19,000 in our operating budget because of the new school finance law. Uh, over the past uh, six or eight years, uh, special education has been underfunded. We pay a fee to uh, our special education cooperative, and that amounts to about uh, $30,000 for us. Also, costs continue to increase. Um, it is important enough that we have been cutting expenses from our budget. Uh, between this last school year and this upcoming year, uh, we've implemented or planned about 80, over $80,000 worth of cuts between uh, one teaching position and some teacher aid positions and uh, insurance on vehicles and student accident insurance and some of those things. So we're trying, uh, but things just keep getting worse. Uh, so what we're talking about is with a, a no vote, nothing will change, uh, but we'll lose some state funding. We'll have less money to operate on. A yes vote, we increase our operating budget by about $86,000. What does that mean for taxes? With our mill rate, it means about 2.4 mill increase. Uh, now we understand, and the board understands that uh, that's, that's tough on taxpayers to, to do that. So one thing that we could do is reduce our another area of our budget in our capital outlay to offset some of that increase. And why would that matter? Why would we just increase one area of our budget and decrease another? Why can't we just keep it all the same? Well, with capital outlay, we can only spend that money on certain things, like uh, vehicles and equipment and building expenses, things like that. We can't pay teachers with that money. So it makes sense if we could uh, offset some of those expenses, but increase this other part of our budget, uh, then we can get more money in the classroom to pay the teachers and buy textbooks and those things. So, so that's why we're looking at making that adjustment. Now, does that mean my taxes are gonna go up or go down? I can't tell you that, because so much of that depends on the value of property uh, in the district oil and gas uh, value, uh, how that attaches to property values, that makes our mill levy fluctuate quite a bit. So even if we did nothing to our budget, our mill levy could go up to, it could go down to mills. Uh, we just don't know. So uh, in reality, it could we could increase the budget and our mill levy would stay flat. Uh, or we could uh, do nothing and our mill levy could go down. It still could go up. So I can't guarantee anything. The goal of the Board of Education is to keep the mill levy relatively flat. Uh, you'll see that graph on the mill levy uh, for the school district over the past 10 years. It's 
kind of small on your paper. Uh, but you can see we're, we're as low as we have been right now as far as the mill levy uh, for the past seven years. We've been only been two, two years out of the last decade that we've been as low as we are right now. Now, I don't want to go too deep into uh, how our school district budget works. But I do think it's important to cover a couple of things. To simplify our school budget a little bit, we have the general fund, which is 20 mills. We tax our taxpayers in the district, our property owners, 20 mills. That's set by state statute. Every school district does that. That doesn't change. And then our local option budget is 30% of the general fund. But then the state does some math that actually increases that. So it's, it's not 30% of this number. It's a little higher than that. I could go into more detail about that, but it gets pretty complicated. So right now our local option budget is about 900000 and we pay expenses out of that for anything. Uh, to buy a vehicle, to buy textbooks, to pay the heat bill, uh, to pay teacher salaries, any of those things. Both of these funds, we do that. We also take some of this money and transfer it to other funds. Uh, driver's Ed is a good example of that. We have to pay our Driver's Ed salary and uh, fees and everything out of, out of the Driver's Ed fund. So we take some of that money out of our general fund and local option budget and transfer it to these other funds. And then that third, that third area of our budget is capital outlay. This is where we are right now. Um, this is, I meant to change that. That should be just uh, expenses for buildings, okay? So capital outlay, we, we buy equipment and we spend that money on the building. So currently our total mill levy is 47.5. So what are we talking about changing? This will stay roughly the same, our general fund. Our local option budget would increase by 3%, which means about 90,000. And we'll use that for any expenses. And then our capital outlay mill levy would be from zero to eight mills, somewhere in that range. And typically, if, if the mill levy is going to take a big jump, we may adjust the capital out of the mill levy and just do with less, uh, less dollars in our capital out fund. So the total could be anywhere from uh, you know, 42 to 50 in that range, roughly. So that's what we're talking about with our local option budget. Here's another important point about our cash balance. Um, some would say that schools are holding a bunch of money and they have lots of money to spend. Uh, we've been actually spending our cash balance down. Now why do we need to keep some of that money? Uh, because we have to start off the year before we start getting funding. And we have to get through, uh, through times before our tax collections come in. For example, we get a big tax collection check in January. We have to be able to pay teacher salaries and do all of those things uh, until we get that big, uh, big check in January. But I just wanted to show this to illustrate that, that we have been spending more than we've been taking in. So we've been doing our part to spend down those cash balances. We can't go any further than this. Actually, it's gonna take a big drop because we paid off our bond and uh, we no longer have that sitting there. Some would also say that uh, schools are funded as high as they have been uh, in a lot of years. These are our two main funds, the general fund and the local option budget. There's a lot of numbers there, but I think the key point there is from over the past six years, 2008 to 2014, our enrollment has gone down about 9%. So our budget 
would go down as well. And our budget has gone down about 10%. And if you figure that on a per pupil basis, it's, it's gone down even from that. You should expect that to even stay the same. So our funding has gone down a lot more than our enrollment has. Any questions? Uh, I guess I'd just like to open it up for questions on this. Now, any questions on this or anything I've covered there? I know it's in the article that was in the St. John uh, paper. Now, this percentage that would be the increase in this past is in it, and it is uh, accepted or not. Um, that would, would that be, it will be continually there for. Yes, the authority for that would be. It, it's not set in the budget. Every August, the board would set the budget, so it could be up to a maximum of 33% is what it would be. So it doesn't always have to be that. It's not establishing the budget with that. But it would be that, that way? Yes. Yes. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, our mill levy from last year to this year is actually lower. Uh, so if the tax dollars that you pay for the school district are higher, then that would have to do with your property valuation. Did you notice what your, the value of your property did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an important point because even if the mill levy, if the mill levy stays the same and your property value goes up, you're going to pay more in taxes and you know, more dollars in taxes. So it may look like our mill levy is flat, but we may be paying more dollars in taxes. So I'm guessing that's the situation there if your property value is going up. Would you would, have, it, would it tell that on that sheet then if the property value went up? Uh, it would somewhere, yes. They'll, they'll send you, uh, the county will send a sheet that shows your assessed valuation. And I can't, I can't tell you what happened with uh, the county mill that they, but just for school district from 2012 to 2013, it went down. Almost one. Yes, ma'am. Just an observation. Um, the money that we pay in these taxes are uh, come back directly for the benefit of our community. These are not taxes that we pay to some bureau hundreds, thousands of miles away, and we never see what the money is used for. We see it directly in our community and the schools are the lifeblood of our community. It's a good point. Gentlemen, did you guys have anything to add? No, we're just uh like Mr. Myers talked uh, State didn't do us any favors with this recent law. Our funding's actually going down. And it's got such a curve off that we were part of for special education funding is going to be incurring some additional costs due to the long care starting next year. So we're not asking for an increase in taxes to uh, raise our money anymore. We're just trying to maintain what we have. And, uh, offer the best education we can to the kids. Hey, try to pay our teachers a fair salary in the meantime. So, um, and we'll feel that it's an overwhelming tax 
like you said, you know, school is a life of the community. And, uh, the last thing you want to do is see the quality of their education go down or possibly lose the school at some point. So uh, we just we wouldn't ask for it if we didn't feel it was necessary. And I bring my papers. Who could I show my papers to to show my I'd be glad to go over it with you. And where are you at? In the uh, on the entrance on Broadway, on the, in the main school building, at 505 North Broadway. You can just call the district office there and uh, set up a time. I'd be glad to go over it with you. So you can see by the business card, but I don't have one. Year 13. Yeah. Before that, you know, I went back to uh, 12, 11, and 10. Mm -hmm. And it was considerably less. I was just kind of wondering why I didn't have so much. Mr. Meyer. Yeah. I do know that the county mill levy did go up last year. I don't know exactly what the amount was, but I believe it's somewhere between 9 and 11 mills. So that may be part of it. Um, the city mill levy went up slightly as well. So if you're in the city, that could contribute to it. If you're in the county, the county mill levy would contribute to it as well. Well, I didn't understand. You said what you said in the last or the value of the land? No, the, the county mill levy. So what Stafford County levies for their taxes, and for their share of that, went up this past year. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it very well could have been. If it was, if it was that much, that many mills, it sure would. Have. So what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> We're all here wanting to keep our school you know, and do what's necessary. Okay, the only cheap school in Stafford County, Stafford, and St. John, and then the only nice high school. Three? Three schools. Here's what a few of the things that we have done, which we you know don't like to do, but we need to be efficient. We've reduced one teacher aid position. Uh, our student accident insurance, uh, we reduce coverage for that, uh, which helps out our kids and their families. Uh, year, our yearbook, we reduced a, a large amount of those costs. Uh, we tried to sell some of our vehicles to uh, save on the insurance costs. Also bring in some more revenue. Uh, one teaching position we will, we will be without next year. Uh, and with the parents as teachers program, uh, we've eliminated that. All of these are, most of those are pretty tough decisions that the boards had to make. Uh, and that so, was just this year. Yeah, this year and, and uh, upcoming year. We've been cutting for several years in a row. I don't understand that. Yeah. And it's not, uh, you know, it is it is a shift uh, from state tax to local taxes, and I think we're going to see more of that uh, unless things change. You know, the state budget isn't in good shape. I think it's getting worse. But that's part of this, the new finance law that they've allowed us to raise some of that locally, uh, which was previously being provided by the state. So, so it, it is, I think, a shift from, from the state to local governments. I'd also like to note that our enrollment is not, it's not going down. It actually went up this year, the last two years. So, that's not the, the case, you know, our enrollment's not declining, it's, it's 
state funding is the problem. Well, I don't, I don't have further information to share. I think I've covered everything. If you have more questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Or if you feel free to call, call my office. I'd be glad to sit down and go to the paper. I'd love to know your name. Okay. I, I, yeah. I'm going to write it on your paper there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Education to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? No changes. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. President, I may we approve the agenda as presented. Second. I move to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Aye. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't catch you seconded. I didn't. Thank you. Oh. Motion carried 5-0. Consent agenda. Uh, nothing unusual here. Uh, we're getting down to the end of our budget year. Uh, we've got a lot to move around. You might notice 7% left in the general fund, but we move a lot of salaries, uh, salary costs from supplemental general. Uh, we also reserve. haven't received all of our income. Say that again? We also haven't received all of our income. Okay. And. Uh, uh, vocational education and uh, at risk, so uh, we move a lot of that around here at the end of the year. So. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Sorry, second. So we move and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 5 0. No patron comments tonight. Budget hearing. Go ahead and open the hearing. Any public comments? Public comments. <laughs> Carol, you want to say anything? <laughs> no? No, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and close the hearing. Moving on to business. The amended budget. Uh, you have a copy of that in your uh, in supporting documents. We're just talking about the general fund, and we adjusted the special education budget just a little bit uh, to make sure we didn't have to do that again. Recall we had to republish that one last year, uh, right at the end of the year. So uh, the increase is due to uh, higher enrollment than what we had budgeted for. So this was published on May 7th, uh, and then we have to have wait wait 10 days before having this hearing, and that's all been done. So we're good to go. Mr. President, I move the board approve the budget amendment as presented. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the budget amendment as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried by the. Mission and vision statements. Um, you've seen this uh, more than once. Um, the mission statement isn't a lot different than uh, than our current mission statement. Um, it says, we believe that all students can learn, therefore our mission is to provide and encourage equitable opportunity in the development of lifelong learning skills which will allow students to become positive contributors in a changing society. So not a lot different. Uh, as a staff, we didn't really like that part about, you know, our mission is to you know, provide equitable opportunity. You know, I think our mission is a lot more than that, than just opening the door and giving the kids a place to, to learn. Uh, so we thought that word ensure was pretty important. So, uh, you know, we've kind of been over this, but uh, I would like the board to uh, approve this and kind of make it our official document. Uh, Mr. President, I'll move the board approve the mission and vision document as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the mission and vision document as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. Student accident insurance. 
I recall that last year we changed our coverage quite a bit. We had uh, the best coverage you could have uh, for student accident insurance. Uh, school districts are not required to provide this at all. It is a nice benefit for our uh, community members, especially those that uh, don't have insurance, or don't have very good in insurance or adequate insurance. So uh, we did reduce that, that benefit uh, some last year to save some money. We were looking at uh, uh, over $17,000 for the premium last year. Uh, this year, the same company, Student Assurances, uh, Student Assurance Services, uh, page 27, that's their quote. This is what we paid this year is 11600 I had a quote from another company, K&K &K Insurance, uh, and that total is 7672 uh, With the insurance, it's kind of tough, uh, as most of you probably know. It's tough to compare apples to apples with insurance policies. Uh, one may cover something well and another may not cover that so well, but cover something else better. Uh, so it's, it's really difficult to do that. But I asked both the uh, representatives, of, uh, uh, both companies that represented from each one uh, to look over the other's policy and explain to me uh, our student assurances agent, he, he said, you know, the K&K &K insurance is, is comparable and in some cases even a little better. Uh, Save about $4,000. Uh, the concern there is just going with a different company and then they end up raising our rates uh, a few years down the road. But uh, if it was a savings of $500 or something like that, uh, I would consider that. But $4,000 is quite a bit. We've been with Student Assurance Services for a long time. They, they're a good company. They pay well. Uh, uh, they pay on time. And they're easy to work with. So K and K, it's a it's a new thing, but uh, for us, we we'll have to deal with something new. But uh, I, I still, I, I feel that the savings is is enough to justify changing. Uh, it says here on. On note D on this K and K that says plan two hundred with sixty five hundred deductible. Uh, is, that, is it the same? Yeah, uh, no, it's actually a lower deductible with K and K. Okay. Here's what we have now uh, with student assurance services. Uh, Zero to ten thousand is what's covered for various accidents. Now it's 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 kind of disingenuous to say ten thousand, but. Uh, you know, if you have surgery, it may cover 1,200 of that. Uh, if you have an x-ray, it'll cover a maximum of maybe $300. So, I'm guessing I could tell you numbers. You know, for example, uh, a surgical operation, it'll pay 80% of the charges up to $2,000. So if you have a surgery that costs eight thousand dollars, it's only going to cover up to two thousand. Um, uh, hospital uh, care eighty percent uh, up to three thousand dollars, four hundred fifty dollars per day, and the other policy is the same. So, so it's not covering every expense up to ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars is just a maximum. Now above that is the mid catastrophic coverage. So between ten and twenty-five thousand, uh, it'll pay all of the expenses that are usual and customary. So student assurance services, their mid-catastrophic policy has a ten thousand dollar deductible. So if you have a serious injury, uh, it'll cover uh, everything above ten thousand. And then with this other policy, it'll cover some of those things under ten thousand. Now, once you get to twenty-five thousand, uh, if it's an activities association event or a junior high or high school sporting event, uh, uh, that's that's a typical case activity: football, basketball. Then that insurance will kick in above that. So, back on the K and K insurance, the long answer to your question, Tom, is that this is a ten thousand dollar deductible. The other one is a sixty-five hundred dollar. So it kicks in a little sooner for 
and that would be catastrophic. And this insurance, it, it covers all the kids that are enrolled in school or it does. just athletics? Or it, it covers covers everybody. Uh, so the first part... Only when they're in school, is that right or not? Yes, okay. at school. Uh, Activities. At, at, yeah, so the... Uh, the first one here is at school, including ath athletics and activities for junior high and high school. It gives us that premium. And also at school, uh, excluding at athletics and activities for the elementary. Uh, so they're not going to cover if they have an after school football game or something, because we don't really have anything like that sanctioned. But PE would be in Yes, room? yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for just athletics and activities, that's the mid-catastrophic plan that kicks in at 6500 to $25,000. And they don't have to enroll or anything, it's just something that... Yeah, we, we, we purchase it for them. Some schools provide nothing. And uh, some schools would just provide maybe the mid-catastrophic one. And this company could offer optional insurance for families to take advantage of. So some schools start at ten thousand average. Mm -hmm. They don't have. <coughs> yeah. Over. And some schools do none of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing to remember about this too is if you have health insurance, your health insurance pays before this ever does. Uh, my family's. Health insurance will be the primary uh, insurer, and if that pays, uh, this won't kick in. Okay. <clears throat> Discussion. Uh, Mr. President, I move the board approve the district purchase student accident insurance with KK insurance at a premium of $7,672 for the 2014-15 school year. Second. It's moved and seconded to approve the purchase of accident insurance with KK insurance for the 2014-15 school year. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, right. nay. Motion carries 5-0. Insurance policy renewal. Uh, this was welcome news. Um, on the total premium cost here with our uh, insurance carrier. No. No. Okay. I'm fine. Uh, I'll just follow here. You have to tell me if she actually. Yes. Missed yeah. missing something? It didn't get all downloaded. That's okay. Well, I'll just follow along here. with you guys. <laughs> Got a spare. That's why I do extras. Supporting documents. Oh, okay. I don't have the other yeah, action. Okay. Okay. The uh, insurance uh, we work with the insurance uh, out of Hutch, and our insurance carriers, Employers Mutual. Uh, they insure a lot of municipalities, cities, and counties, and school districts. Um, so we do not shop around uh, this year. We typically won't unless we need to as far as EMC is concerned. Um, the biggest drop uh, was in our workers' comp. Uh, we had some things uh, on a loss history come off, so you can see the total. The column on the right is the premium, so we saved a significant amount there. Uh, and then property, of course, went up a little bit, uh, which is expected. Uh, I heard of several school districts getting dropped. From, by EMC, uh, for having high losses, and, uh, and uh, others were large increases in premiums. So I feel pretty fortunate, but we did have a significant increase last year. So uh, 
my recommendation is to improve the uh, insurance packages presented here. Is this something that we could utilize our local uh, new agent with? It is. Or is yep. it too late to do that? Or? It is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, we will pursue that uh, here uh, at the beginning of the, you know, at the end of the calendar it's year. The same company, it's a different mm -hmm. carrier or yep. different agent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've met with uh, with uh, Trey Bergen and uh, and uh, Dwayne, uh, the, the gentleman he works with. So we're going to meet here at the end of the calendar year. See about switching. So. Entertain a motion to approve, Mr. President. I move mean, we approve the. Um, we know all the insurance as Mr. Meyer has presented. Second. It's moved and seconded to approve the renewal of the insurance package as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. Vehicle purchase. Um, I included the vehicle replacement schedule in your supporting documents there. Uh, the one thing we're not taking care of is that 15-passenger uh, van, uh, if you remember that saga. Uh, <coughs> I had in, planned on getting a short bus, uh, like a 14-passenger 14, <laughs> 14 bus that can be driven by anybody. Uh, you don't have to have a CDL to drive that. Uh, but I think we need to hold off on that with our major projects over here. Um, there's some things that plumbing issues coming up and some heating and air uh, that were not part of the original package that we're going to need to maybe dig in a little bit. Um, also, there's some situations with our, our cash flow. Um, next year, the state will, will be taking our 20 mills. Right now, uh, uh, you know, we collect 20 mills for our general fund and it goes to the county and then the county pays that to us at uh, different points in the year. Well, next year, that 20 mils will go to the state, and then the state will send it to us. Uh, why would they do that? I, I think it's all a, a game so they can say, look how much more we're giving schools, uh, and it's, it's not doing anything other than moving money around. But, but that does present a challenge with our cash flow, uh, which makes me a little concerned. I don't want to dig too deep in our capital outlay uh, right off the bat here. So, I, I want to hold off on that short bus purchase, but we do need to replace one of our Suburbans uh, about two years ago. So, I'm asking for uh, approval to uh, purchase this, uh, a full-size SUV on the state contract. Actually, in the state contract, uh, they don't specify the make and model. They specify um, you know, certain requirements. So, actually, the state contract this year is a Ford Expedition. I don't know, six one way, half a dozen the other, I don't know, but I just just soon have a suburban, but for the cost, brand new, uh, we need to go to the state contract. It will it be white? Yeah. And uh, nothing fancy. We'll get the job done. What time did you say? Uh, Ford, Ford Expedition. Mr. President, I move the board approve the purchase of a new full-size uh, SUV on the state contract at a cost of $28,968. Second. I move and second to purchase a new full-size SUV on the state contract at a cost of $28,968. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Those nay. Motion carries 5 0. As a reminder on this, we're, we're allowed to, uh, it's, it's over 20,000 we need to bid this, um, but with the state contract, it's all been pre bid. So that's how we can uh, do that. It's a, it's a darn good deal. Yeah, so right. they're, they're selling pretty much at cost. So. All right. 
disposal of vehicles. Uh, this is simple. We, we just need to get rid of van number 10. It's time for it to go. Which one's that? A uh, little brown van. Uh, it actually hasn't run in six months. It's At least. Is that that little Toyota? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get 28,000 bid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A donation? Yeah. I thought it was donated to us, wasn't it? Really? I, thought it was. I wouldn't think we could take a donation or something. Okay. No, Maybe we can. Okay. Mm. okay. Mr. President, I move the board approve the sale of van number 10 by sealed bid. Second motion. And seconded to approve the sale of van number 10 by sealed bid. Is there any discussion? On all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Student handbooks. Uh, those were included as a separate attachment. Um, nothing's really changed. The uh, changes are highlighted. Uh, Mr. Olive, did you have anything specific you wanted to bring up there? No, most of mine was changing SRS to DCF, just a title change. And couple just slight time changes and then um, I want to say page 20 ish maybe I had that highlighted in green because I didn't know what page that was really referring to yeah it says see page 42 or page 45 well our handbook's only like 25 pages long so I'm not sure what page if that's referring to a district document or I have no idea where those page numbers came from. Okay. Yeah, Our handbook's we'll not that long. Yeah, we'll just string those, I think. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, then Mr. Bergen's handbook uh, starts on page 28 of that. Uh, nothing's really uh, outrageous there. Few changes and some changing the word will to the word may, which is good practice anyway. So, we're going to rope ourselves into something we don't think is right. But the bell schedule is going to change a little bit. We'll talk about that in my report. So, that's pretty much it. Any questions from the board? Mr. President, I move that the board approve the 2014 15 student handbooks as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the 2014 15 student handbooks as presented. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. Math curriculum draft. Uh, if you recall, last time I shared with you uh, just a couple of the grade levels of the math curriculum. Uh, this is the entire document that's cleaned up a bit and uh, just spells out each uh, each concept the kids are to learn. And, the, and this connects everything to our new state standards. Uh, that's what all those crazy numbers are. So, uh, over the course of the next year, teachers will be, uh, you know, teaching their year and also uh, seeing what what of this document fits, what needs to change, uh, and uh, kind of clean this up over the next year uh, when we go through a full year of teaching each grade level in each course. So. Mr. President, of the board approve the math curriculum draft as presented. Is there a second? Second. We'll move and second to approve the math curriculum draft as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5-0.
Safe routes to school grant. The Department of Transportation, uh, with, with some federal dollars, I believe, they, uh, they, they have this grant program that uh, is to encourage kids to walk to school, walk or bike to school. Uh, so they offer up to $200,000 for a grant program to do that, to fix sidewalks, to uh, you know, plan parking, uh, for safety issues, and uh, you know, we have some some crazy issues. The uh, sidewalk or the crosswalk to to nowhere, right north of the or south of the library. There, uh, this goes into the street where there's that the hill and those steps. You know, some things like that that uh, they take money and uh, design work to fix. So, um, Sydney Blanton, she's the Assistant Director at the Economic Development, Stafford County Economic Development. She was working on putting this together uh, on behalf of the city. It wouldn't be us applying for it. Uh, but there will be some cost associated with that. Uh, thinking the maximum cost would be $75,000 if we're awarded the total uh, grant cost. Uh, some of that would likely need to be shared by us as a school district. But we have a lot of concrete work that needs done uh, right around the school. But this could also pay for you know, sidewalks going away from the school, you know, six or eight blocks all over the town. Could it pay for some better parking lots north of the school? No. No, it would all have to be related to kids walking or biking to school. So I guess we'd have to show that it was helping with that or keeping kids safe from walking. An example would be putting uh, parking blocks uh, right outside the grade school office in our shared parking lot. And when you park, you pull right up on the sidewalk, uh, which isn't a safe situation. I would guess the safe routes to schools could purchase some parking blocks or something like that just to keep kids safe when they're walking. So uh, what we're talking about doing, Sydney's going to put together the grant application, uh, and if we get it, uh, uh, we would, then we would need to talk about what we want to try to do and what kind of cost there would be. So right now, we're not uh, committing to any costs, uh, but I wanted to bring it up because if this board was uh, just absolutely opposed, then we might as well not put it to work. So. I think we ought to at least pursue it. Uh, I worry about spending much money, uh, just like I was talking before, outside of what we've committed to, but I think it's worth pursuing. When would you know if the grant was awarded? The grant is due here um, Next month, Julianne, is that right? Yeah, the call. I think November is what she said. That it, when the that, that, was it July something, 17? The grant is due July 18th. The application oh, is yeah, due. Oh, yeah, on your sheet there. They'll award in October, and then it would start from there if we were to receive it. So October, yeah. And that would be one design or one phase of that, and that'd be the design phase, and then, uh, and then after that would be a, you know, a second phase of actually doing the construction, which would be a little later on that. So the city would really be the lead organization. Yes. Okay. Yes. And doing the work would likely require us to contribute some of that cost. If it's right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and that would have to be determined, you know, if it's uh, how, how much of that we, we would be paying for, uh, relating to how much is on our property and how much is, is not. You know, it all kind of relates to the school anyway, but um, that would need to be determined later. And we might not talk about it again. We might not get the grant. We don't have to worry about it anymore. So would this board be okay with uh, 
that possibility at least. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they can pursue it. Okay. Oh, good. Very, very good. Budget authority. Uh, this is just a, a formal uh, yearly action item to give uh, give me authority to oversee the transfers within the budget to uh, close out the books for the year. This is an every year. Yeah, yeah. And I say me. It's it's not me doing it. <laughs> I want to take credit for work I've done. So, okay. With my approval. Okay. Entertain a motion. Mr. President, I move that the board grant authority to the administration to make the final financial transfers and adjustments in the educational interest of the school district. Second. Okay. It's moved and seconded to grant authority to the administration to make final transfers and adjustments in the educational interests of the school district. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. Destruction of documents. Uh, this is another yearly item to uh, close out the year. Um, we don't need to keep all of the financial records. There's some records we we'll keep longer than that, but our financial records we dispose of after seven years. So this gives us authority to do that. Can you shred? Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Shred? Yeah, we have a shredding a company that uh, takes our stuff. Okay. Mr. President, I move the board approve the destruction of appropriate district financial records from 2005 and six. Budget year. It's been moved and seconded to approve the destruction of the appropriate district financial records from the 2005 2006 budget year. And before we vote, I guess I should say we don't we don't shred all of that, do we, Julian? Because um. all of those uh, financial records will be public documents. Any, anything private. Yeah, anything that would be of a, of a private nature, anything relating to health insurance premiums, anything like that, we would shred. But the rest of it, and chances are we probably just toss it all in to be shredded to be on the safe side. That way we don't inadvertently miss something that shouldn't be going out. Discussion, further discussion. Do they do that on site? Yes. Shred on site, they do? Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a um, monthly service right now. They come in, we've got a lockbox in the high school athletic director's office that everybody has access to, but only the central office has a key to get into. Um, they come and pick that up once a month. And then if we have a big project that we need them to do, they charge us $6 a box and they'll come out and they'll set a, I'm not sure exactly how they do it because I've never been around one like that, but they come out and shred on site, haul it all off. Company called Shredded. Yeah, I can't which topic. Yeah, we use it. Is there any further discussion? Not all in favor, aye. No. Uh, opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. On the communications, thanks. Communications. I uh, went to several track meets this year and thought everything ran real well. Real well. I'd like to commend the coaches and athletic director for doing a good job. We always get lots of compliments on how the track meets are at. Mm -hmm. great job. Barb? I went to the PDC meeting and they talked about things for next year and how to encourage more people to be part of the program and maybe ways of trying to do more encouragement that way. So 
and about how to change officers and just a lot of little yearly things. But so voted on points. Central Co-op board meeting by uh, the conference call in May. So, on to administrative reports. Mr. Olive? Um, start off with, if you've been out near the playground area the last week or so, the PTO did install, it's called a button trail. There's, I believe, 20 Oh, a little platform. Do you have the picture on your iPad by chance? No, it's not on here. Little stepping stone type of things anyway, but um, the PTO's had it for about a year. They just haven't had a good opportunity to install them. So last Tuesday, several several workers came in and dug holes and, and concreted those in and then came out a few days later and put the tops on those. So um, more playground equipment for the kids next year. Um, the summer lunch program began last Tuesday. It'll run through the end of the month, basically anyone under 18 can come and eat lunch from noon to, to 12.30 any day, or Monday through Friday. Um, our summer after school program begins tomorrow. It's going to run Tuesday through Thursday for the next four weeks. They've, they kind of, Tuesday, Wednesday, they do some activities, and then Thursday they're taking a field trip each day, um, or each Thursday. They're going to Great Bend this week, Hutch next week to the Cosmosphere. I want to say maybe back to Great Bend the third week and then to the wetlands the, the fourth week. So that'll start up tomorrow. Last I know they have 44 kids signed up for it, so quite a few kids participating in it. Um, Mr. Meyer will probably talk more about the construction in his report, but it is underway in our, our building. There's stuff all over the place, so they're making progress. Um, and then I put our anticipated enrollment numbers for the building for next year. Um, we had a small sixth grade class, kindergarten classes, a little bit bigger, so enrollment may be up just a, a few students on our side of the building. Uh, and right now we're at about 46, I believe, for preschool. And we anticipate that you know we may get a straggler or two that, that didn't get screened or whatever. But as of right now, we're anticipating about 46. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Uh, Mr. Bergen's report is here. Not a lot to. Uh discuss here. Uh, you see the enrollment numbers for 13, 14, and then for, uh, for next year. We're going to be up a few uh, in the high school. Uh, looking like we'll be 2A again. Uh, we had a big class. Uh, we already did the handbook and the uh, activity report and the uh, Class schedules, he and uh, Mrs. Hacker working on that, uh, getting those all lined out for next year. Um, along those same lines is an item in my report, uh, uh, additional course offerings. We've got, uh, I think, eight signed up for plant science and animal science. Uh, Bart is going to send somebody down to teach that during the school day. I'm uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, and that's a Senate Bill 155 class. They get college credit. State pays for that. Uh, there's some some costs associated with that, but not <coughs> full tuition. Uh, we got five kids last I heard interested in uh, going to Barton for the auto, uh, their auto program, and then about uh, 12, I think, uh, signed up for online courses for uh, college classes. Um, the class schedule changes. What we've done uh, um, is adjusted the lunch schedule so junior high and high school have a separate lunch uh, so we don't have those kids intermingled all the time. If you've ever been through there during that time, it's kind of a zoo. Uh, so we've made some changes to, to help out with that situation a little bit. Um, but to do that, they have to have their LS, which is learning support time every day. Uh, that also helps with our schedule and matching that up with the elementary. You know, we've had uh, the high school and junior high had a different schedule on two days of the week. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday were a different schedule. 
which makes it difficult to line everything up. When we share Mrs. Cornwell and Mrs. Friesen uh, and line those things up. So that schedule will be aligned. Uh, all the times will coincide. Uh, so they'll have, they'll have some, some other things to do with their career planning and uh, character development, those things during their learning support time. So uh, not everybody's in favor of that change, but it's a change that's, uh, that's needed. So. So you see a little bit different class schedule next year. Uh, administrator retreat. We're going to get away on uh, Monday, June 9th, and uh, and uh, get our final planning done for next year, our professional development, and all those things, uh, our uh, school improvement plans, and get all those things lined up, and get out of the building for a day. And, uh, everybody leave us alone. Uh, KSSA, that's the Superintendents Association, uh, the summer workshop next week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, ACT Work Keys Assessments, uh, Senior Night, they recognize this, but uh, ACT provides an uh, assessment uh, that gauges work-ready skills. Uh, there's three areas, Applied Mathematics, Locating Information, and Reading for Information. Uh, so all of our seniors took that. Uh, they have different levels of certificates depending on how you did on each, uh, each subject. Uh, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. 17% uh, of our kids were bronze, 57 were silver, 26% were gold, and we didn't have anybody in the platinum level. But, uh, that's that's uh, another test we're giving our kids to. Uh, they'll, they'll have a certificate that they, that's nationally recognized. And, so uh, we'll see how that goes in future years if we continue to do that. Um, uh, retirees, we recognized uh, Mrs. Allen, Mr. Cooper, and uh, Mrs. Lewis uh, with the clock. Uh, we purchased a clock. Uh, the district purchased one for each of our retirees with a with a nice note, Julie, and uh, kind of put that all together. Uh, there was a thank you note there about that if you didn't get a chance to see that. Uh, the construction update, I've got a few pictures here. Um, not a lot. Uh, this is Mrs. Falk's classroom, how it looked during the school year, and then that teacher workroom. Uh, this is how it looks well, how it looked a few days ago. It's actually got sheetrock up and got a little more done now. But that's where the two offices will be. The workroom is now gone. The classroom is no longer. That's them cutting the hole in the wall for the secure entrance. Make sure the office there. Uh, high school restrooms with fixtures removed, so the boys with all the tile removed. And that'll be our main entrance there. This is the entryway where will be a secure entrance there. And uh, this is where they've cut that hole in, in the wall for the doorway. This is one of those concrete slabs. Uh, it's foot thick, reinforced concrete on the, the original structure there. And that was actually an exterior wall on the original building. And that will be the entryway into the outer office there. This is the boys' restroom on the west end of the elementary in the grade school office. We've got some plumbing issues to deal with that we kind of knew would come up. Uh, dig into that old plumbing to make some changes that we didn't plan on. This is the restrooms at the east end. Actually, we've got more done now. The, those walls on the side are actually pretty much gone into the classroom. They've got temporary walls built. This is the plastic around that area. So. If you'd like to see that, feel free to come by and take a look. 
Uh, they hope to have us uh, into that that office by the end of the month, uh, and then we'll start work on the other side. Uh, the lease purchase agreement. Um, been working with uh, accountant uh, on that, making sure we get the money transferred right because we can't we can't borrow money is the issue. Uh, we can uh, we can lease equipment. But state statute does not allow school districts to borrow money. So we had conversations with the accountant making sure we do that correctly. They, the bank can't just give us the money and then we pay for, pay the contractors out of that because we would run out of budget authority. And we haven't budgeted for that. So the payment has to come from the bank uh, to the vendors and then we make that lease payment every year. And then our accountant said you really need to have the attorney review this, make sure everything is, is up to par. Um, well, dealing with attorneys, uh, it, it's turned into a lot more uh, nitpicking than, uh, than I like, but we'll get there on that agreement. Uh, we should have that, that done uh, in the next day or so. I'll be ready to roll on that. So, uh, Any questions about the construction? What's going on? Uh, the election, we had a public meeting tonight. We had three people there uh, in Carroll and uh, had a few decent questions, but uh, I really haven't heard a lot. Uh, you can vote any time between now and uh, noon on June 16th, or you can vote on June 17th. So just go in the county clerk's office and tell them you want to vote. And try to encourage everybody you can to, to get the facts and vote. Um, I'm asking people to consider voting yes. Uh, however you vote, I want. I hope they have the facts. So we've got information on our website. I put an article in the paper last week. Uh, I didn't check with Terry this week, but he was planning on putting an article on the front page this week. So, uh, so the information's out there. Uh, the budget uh, workshop we have uh, that coming up here June 16th. We'll uh, learn all the new changes uh, in our yearly budget meeting with KSD. Uh, and I mentioned to you the 20 mills, uh, that, that whole situation. Uh, I don't know how that will play out and what that will do to our cash flow. But, um, we'll approve that at our July 14th meeting. So our goal is to not have a special meeting for budget. Uh, we'll, we're going to try to have that ready to go for our July meeting and then officially approve it in August. So, um, Along those lines, a board meeting on second Monday. Uh, uh, I need to make sure everybody's okay with that and we'll go ahead and schedule that, that meeting for July 14th. Um, it's on the calendar for the, for the first Monday. <coughs> make sure I have that date right. <coughs> Monday, 14th. Yeah. Yeah, first Monday would be the seventh. It's probably starting in July. In July, yes. Now, see, we don't actually establish board meeting dates until our July meeting. So, uh, just want to make sure we're all on board with that. Uh, moving on to the second Monday. We've talked about it a few times. But that'll allow us to get all the financial reports done. And, we don't have to bring hard copies of bills like we do sometimes. And we should have that already in the world. Okay. Okay. Um, one other item I didn't have on here. We're looking at, uh, I don't know what we're going to call it. Maybe uh, I think we're stuck on Tiger Pride Night right now. Or, uh, um, and we have our open house one night. We have kindergarten orientation one night. We have our scrimmages one night. We're going to try to combine all that together to open house and our scrimmages on uh, Friday night that we usually have scrimmages. Uh, the kids would do their pictures like they normally do and then maybe from 5 to 6.30 in that range we'd have an open house. Uh, come meet your, your kid's teacher and uh, come see the new restrooms and any of those things. Uh, and the goal is to try to get everybody here. And then we go up to the football field and uh, get a chance to introduce our new staff members and 
any, any recognitions like that. Uh, say a few words. Uh, the booster club would do their their watermelon still, uh, and then we'd introduce players and try to make a bigger deal out of it than uh, try to get the, more of the elementary folks involved in that too. So. Yes, uh, personnel. Um, five minutes. <coughs> Include Mr. Olive and myself. Okay. Mr. President, yes. I'm in the board going to executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of non elected personnel. With Mr. Meyer and Mr. Olive to be included. And that we return to open session in five minutes. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded to go in the executive session and discuss personnel matters. In order to privacy of the non elected personnel with Mr. Allen and Mr. Meyer, return to open session in five minutes. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried 5 0. We have three uh, individuals. I recommend we hire uh, Laura Delgadillo as a custodian. Get a motion for motion. motion. Go ahead. You recognize you, Carl? Mr. President, I uh, so move that we hire uh, Laura Delgadillo for custodian. Is there a second? Second. Move and second to hire. Laura Delvedio is a custodian. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Five to I didn't mention this. Our custodians start at 9.50, so. 9.50. Yeah. <coughs> uh, two eight positions? Yeah, the one would be uh, Kristen Knight uh, at $10.50 an hour. Yes. And uh, Crystal Meyer. Ten dollars an hour, both for elementary aides. Can we do them both at the same time? Or we separate? separately. Mr. President, I move we hire Kristen Knight as pair for ten fifty an hour. For second. Second. Move and second to hire Kristen Knight, ten dollars fifty cents an hour for new position. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried by vote. Entertain a motion to hire Crystal Meyer. At ten dollars an hour in an eight position, so moved. Second. <laughs> moved and seconded to hire Crystal Meyer as an eight position at ten dollars an hour. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, right. nay. Motion carried. By the future agenda items. Uh, next meeting will be July fourteenth. I'll make sure we get word out about that. Um, our July meeting is our organizational meeting. Um, I included in your supporting documents the last two pages there, uh, or last three pages there, I guess. Uh, it outlines all of the things that we need to do and any of the appointments. Uh, so you might want to take a look at that. And uh, this is, uh, remember, this is the meeting you have to show up for. Or you'll get appointed to something you don't want to be. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so take a look at that. If there's something uh, you specifically want to be on, let me know between now and then. Uh, uh, we will hopefully have our negotiations done by then. Um, I need to meet with uh, uh, Vance and Stan sometime soon. Get some details hashed out and then we'll be ready to go for our negotiations after the election you know our direction and our goal is to have that budget ready for approval and publish and really go with that picture, um, take a picture okay. <laughs> uh, any other meeting uh, business come for the meeting I entertain a motion to adjourn I move we adjourn move second to adjourn all in favor aye Okay.